Hey, it's Peter here. I wanted to take a moment to explain blockchain and identity uh, for the post that I'm writing on the site right now because it's just a little too tedious to write this out and it maybe helps uh, to explain it verbally. So, why is blockchain so, or why is identity so incredibly complicated on the blockchain? Well, everybody knows what identity is when it comes to something like Google or Facebook or Twitter. You know, you lose your password you can just do a forgot password processing and, and get back into the site. If you lose access to your email, you can probably write them and ask for support. And you can say, you know, this is me and you can prove who you are. And the reason there is because the data is controlled centrally, it's on their servers. And there are people that are at that organization or organizations which um, can verify who you are because they've got control and ownership of it. So the problem with the blockchain is that it's a decentralized technology. One of the simplest ways to understand this is through the metaphor or example of Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin, as you probably all know, is a cryptocurrency and it's basically a currency without a central bank. So I've got some Bitcoin, it's stored on my Bitcoin wallet, very similar to how you've got money in, or cash in your wallet. So if somebody robs you, you lose your wallet, the cash in that wallet's gone. But what's also usually in that wallet is identity. You've got your ID cards, your credit cards or whatever, and there's a whole process that you can go through to get that, those uh, uh, cards replaced and you know get your driver's license back or whatever. But with Bitcoin, there is no identity. The money that's in your wallet is only in your control as long as you have possession with it. Somebody hacks you, somebody steals it, it's gone, you have no recourse because there is no central bank, there is no authority, there's no way to, for you to get that money back. It's gone forever because there's, no, there's nothing tying that money to your identity. It's totally anonymous. So when it comes to something like a music database on the blockchain, it starts to get really, really complicated because you have to have identity. You know, the artists need to be compensated for their work or identified for their work. And if they lose access to this decentralized database, then they're in real trouble. So what we decided to do was to actually push that whole process back at least another year. We've been thinking about getting together with some universities to do some um, conceptual prototyping, some game theory testing, uh, workshops, all kinds of ideas around exploring how identity on the blockchain could work because it just gets super complicated. And I haven't really even touched upon things like um, identity hacking, losing your crypto keys, um, how you have to, how you can build an organization that doesn't have central authority but still has kind of a, of a disputes and resolutions process these things get really super complicated. So we're not even gonna bother dealing with identity on the blockchain in the first stage. The identity part will be handled strictly through Resonate where we can go through a personal verification process and know who all the artists are and be able to work with them on updating and accessing the, the content. So when we do identity later on, then it's gonna be truly move into a fully like open source, totally distributed process. So. It's really even more complicated than I've explained in like three and a half minutes. So uh, hopefully this will work as a brief introduction. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the, the box below. Thanks a lot.